Hey guys, in this video I wanted to compare the Note 10 Plus with the iPhone 11 Pro Max and my favorite feature, number one, numero uno on the Note 10 Plus is that it's got an in-display fingerprint reader. Look, unlock it, just like that, it's unlocked. That being said, the Face ID is way better on iPhone 11 Pro compared to the Note 10 Plus. The Note 10 Plus is very insecure. I'll show you exactly how to hack it in a second. So there you go. It's unlocked right away. I'll do it again. There you go. Unlocked again twice. Next up, my next favorite feature on this is check this out. I'm on YouTube right now, yeah? I'm playing back a video, yeah? Now, look what you can do on Android and the Note 10 Plus. I press this button, I press this button, I drag Chrome to the bottom, look at that. I've got Chrome, I can browse the internet while playing a video. Even though these screens are very similar in size, you can't multitask on an iPhone 11 Pro. My next favorite feature is gonna be for iPhone, and that is the camera. The camera quality on this iPhone is, it's really good. It's not as good as the camera I'm currently recording on, the A6400, like a proper professional camera, but it's, it's really high quality. I'd say it's about 30% better than the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and I've done some serious video recording. I'd always opt for the iPhone camera over the Samsung Galaxy Note 1. Samsung Galaxy Note doesn't support 4K60 on the front-facing camera. It's not as wide on the front-facing camera and the back camera, the exposure, the Note 10 Plus isn't as good. Now there is a way to make the videos of the Note 10 Plus better and I've got a video showing you exactly how to do that but the iPhone definitely wins when it comes to the camera. Okay, next up, this is probably one of my top, top features ever, why I like Android over iOS and that is because of this, this app called NetGuard here. Now this is an open source firewall and what I've done is I pretty much blocked every single app from accessing the internet. So for example, this application here, it has adverts built in, but I've got a firewall, which means it can't access the internet without my express permission. On iOS, however, if an app wants to access the internet, as long as it's in the foreground, it can. So if an app has adverts, if an app wants to take pictures of you and upload it after you've given them permission to take pictures of you, it can do just that. Whereas on Android, if you give an app permission to access your library, access your photographs, access your camera, your audio, it can't upload it to a server without your permission. Thanks to this amazing app called NetGuard, it's free and it's open source. Now, there are some paid firewalls for iOS. However, when you don't have access to the source code yourself, how do you know that the firewall itself isn't stealing your data? You don't. So open source is always better than paid because open source means you can audit the code yourself and find out what's going on. Okay, I, I'm a software developer, so I develop for both platforms. And I gotta say iOS is a million times easier to code for. It is um, so lush to use compared to Android. Android's a bit of a mess. Even iOS's sample codes are a lot nicer than Android's. So iOS, if you want to develop software for it, that is definitely better. Android, on the other hand, again, there's plenty of open source projects and you can even sideload applications. So you can download applications, not necessarily from the Play Store, but you can download applications from other sources and install them on your phone and you're happy as Larry, whereas an iPhone, Unless you have jailbroken your phone, you can't do that. Now, I'm, I'm gonna double down on Android one more time. Android allows applications to run in the background. So for example, when I'm using Google Photos, it, in the background, it's automatically syncing up to Google and uploading all my pictures in the background without me having to launch the application. Whereas on iOS, if I want to use a service which isn't Apple Photos, and I want it to back up automatically in the background, I can't do that. I have, to, I have to constantly launch Google Photos or I have to constantly launch the app and once the app is in the foreground, iOS will allow it to do whatever it wants to do, whereas it doesn't have background permissions to do stuff. So the background services, although it eats up more battery life and although the firewall eats up more battery life and all that kind of stuff, you get more flexibility and customability with Android. Next up, okay, I'm gonna jump in for iOS. I'll give it some, give it some love. 
I'll say, I love the screen recorder, it's really good. And if you've got an Apple TV or an Apple Watch or a Mac AirDrop, all these kind of amazing features, it's a lot more cumbersome on Android. You can transfer files using alternative services, but it's not as seamless and slick as an iPhone is. iPhone's AirDrop is amazing. It makes an amazing connection on the same Wi-Fi. It's really good. Whereas on Android, it's more cumbersome. Again, with AirPlay, if you have an Apple TV, you can just hit screen mirroring and it will work. Whereas Android, you need a Chromecast TV. So it depends. If you've got Chrome, Android, whereas if you've got Apple ecosystem, then you probably want an, an Apple device. Now, if you're looking at the screen, Android gives you way more widgets. And you know what? I'll show you one sick feature on Android, which is this is the Note 10 Plus. I just I fell in love with it. Look, look at this. This is my favorite feature on the S Pen. And Instagram here, it doesn't allow me to select any text. So if I wanted to copy this, I'd have to go on Instagram web and I'd have to copy it from there and then transfer it over to my iPhone. Whereas here, using the S Pen, I can use something called Smart Select. Select this bit of text and then do Extract Text and it will do OCR and grab me the whole text. It's amazing. So if there's any pictures with text in it, you can easily grab grab it and have some fun. And of course, you can draw and all that stuff. So again, Android's winning there. One reason I'd recommend iOS though is the apps you get on it are better. For example, there's LumaFusion. It's a professional grade video editing app on a similar wavelength to Final Cut Pro. You can do some really sick features. Whereas on Android, I always find that the creative apps aren't as good and aren't as well polished. And out of the box, you get iMovie iMovie is amazing, it's an amazing video editing app and there's nothing really that compares on Android. Android's a lot worse. However, again, Android, check this out. It's got USB-C. Now you might be thinking, who gives a f I, I got Lightning, Lightning's amazing. Well, can you do this? This is a proper mirrorless Sony camera, super high quality. Check this out, I'm gonna plug in the HDMI into the side. I'm going to plug in the USB-C into the bottom. Now this is a Cam Link 4K. It allows me to use my HDMI from my camera and convert it into a webcam stream. Look at that. I've got live stream coming out of this super awesome camera straight into my mobile device. Look at that. I'm recording the device using my camera and if I try plugging this in into iOS, all it will allow me to access is the files on the camera. Whereas thanks to this USB-C and Android open platform, it allows me to actually stream HDMI from this amazing camera. So even though the iPhone has a better camera, you can make Android have an even better camera with an upgrade. Now, another thing to consider is value. I got this Note 10 Plus one thousand Australian dollars cheaper than this Pro Max 11 and it came with a free case and already pre-installed screen protector whereas this Pro Max you get the basics and you need to pay extras for a screen protector and case and you probably should get a case because it's way too fragile the back though it's it's a lot nicer on the Pro Max design wise than the Note 10 Plus because this one is a fingerprint magnet, fingerprint C, however, a case on, you know, that sidesteps it. But this one is actually really nice without even a case. However, these parts do smudge. I, I recommend the case because I'm always dropping my phones. Next up though, even though this is a thousand dollars cheaper than the Pro Max, depreciation, iPhones tend to keep their value. In about a year's time, if I got to sell this, I probably would lose $200, maybe $300 in value at most. Whereas this Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, I bet you it's gonna go down half price. I'm gonna sell this on for $500. So this guy, I bought it for $2,150 over here in Australia. I'll probably sell it on for $1,800. Whereas this Note 10 Plus, I bought it for $1,200. I'll probably have to sell it on for $600. So, if you're a eBayer or a salesman wheeling and dealing, iPhone Pro Max is better value for you, even though at a bigger upfront cost. Whereas if you're a basic person like me, 
then just getting it cheaper at the beginning is better. And uh, finally, I guess you guys might have seen my other video about radiation, but the iPhone, look at this, I got an RF meter here. I'm just gonna turn it on and you can see iPhone is straight up red, it's on max, doing <laughs> over 100 milliwatts per meter squared and I don't even have a SIM inside it. I don't even have a SIM inside this one, yeah? Whereas Android, look at it here, I'm right next to it. It's still like nothing's happening. This is uh, micro watts over there. So if you're concerned with RF, RF's been linked with testosterone loss, memory loss, learning disabilities, and even cancer in rats now, then you probably want to go for a Samsung because they've really shaped up in the world of RF. And that is uh, kind of like a brief reasons why to go for an Android or an iPhone. I personally need both because I'm a developer. I write code for both platforms. So that's why I've got both here with me. But my daily driver is definitely the Note 10 Plus. It's, although the camera is, I'd say, 30% worse than the iPhones, the other features, especially multitasking, it is amazing. Like, you don't know how much times I listen to a lecture on my way to work and then I fire up Chrome or the news or, or, even, or even check this out. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. The camera, look at this camera. So I've got a camera, this is just, it's a bit asinine. It's, it's a bit overkill what you can do on an Android. Like I've got a camera app here, I've got Chrome here and I've got YouTube here. YouTube's playing, camera could be doing whatever it is and it's sick. Oh, since we're talking about cameras, you know what? One feature, which is pretty damn sick on Android that you can't do on iOS out of the box. It is possible, according to the APIs, but check out the screen recorder app. Look at that. It can have your face in the screen recorder app, whereas iOS, it just purely records the screen. So you can overlay yourself, giving live commentary and all that kind of goodness, on Samsung, Android, and you can't do that on iOS. Have I missed any features which are critical to you? Probably privacy, maybe Apple's more trustworthy because they, their business model relies on services and it relies on products, whereas Google relies on adverts, so they're more likely to sell your data. Whereas with a firewall, you can really take back control of that privacy. So for me, because I'm a heavy user and I've installed that firewall and I've got a tutorial video, I'll link it in the description below on how to do it yourself. I'd say Android's more secure for me and this fingerprint reader is, is amazing. All right, hope you enjoyed this amazing review of the iPhone versus Android in 2019, iPhone 11 Pro versus Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus and let me know which phone you guys use.